Good morning, Physics 30. I hope you guys are all having a good day today. What we're doing is we're going to start our graphing. So we're going to be applying our lovely skills of y equals mx plus b to graphs involving conservation of linear momentum. So you're going to have to bear with me today. Um, it's kind of hard to do a bunch of graphing stuff um, on the computer setup that I've got. So we're going to do the best we can. I figured out a bunch of stuff with how to do this um, through all the previous filming I did, um, starting in the shutdown in March and on from there. So it should be nicer today than some of the videos that you are going to be watching in your future that I filmed in my past. So it's kind of how she's going to roll. So I need you guys to please pull out your curve straightening portion of your notes. So these notes that I've got up on the screen here. So pull those out. Um, we've already filled in this part and we are now going to skip ahead to this part here. Okay, so I need you to find your section of your notes that has straight line graphs at the top. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Today we are going to be observing how to analyze a lovely straight line graph. It's going to be fun. So these are the steps that you're going to follow, these six steps. Um, generally in each chapter, uh, there's going to be on average, maybe one topic that we're going to be using where you have your graphing skills here. All right. Okay. So today, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we're going to do, step one, is you're going to be given a graph. You are going to be given a graph that is going to have data points. With that graph, you are going to draw your line of best fit if it isn't drawn already. Then, once you have drawn your line of best fit, you are going to figure out, well, what does the X and the Y variables on our graph mean? So what is our manipulated and responding variables? What do they mean? What are they telling us? Okay, so identify what those are. You are going to then, once you have that, you're going to set up an equation that's going to describe the scenario. In our case today, we're doing conservation of linear momentum. So what we were doing the last day, and you're going to be using your sum of initial momentum is going to equal the sum of the final momentum. So that's going to be our setup. Once you have that, you're going to rearrange this equation to isolate your responding variable. So to isolate for y. Well, why do we want to do that? Pun intended, is because we're trying to get this set up to y equals mx plus b. Once we have our equation rearranged to y equals mx plus b, we then can do all sorts of cool graphing stuff, either algebraically, or we can use our graphing calculators to help us with a stat plot. So if you don't remember how to do a stat plot for math, I will show you how to do that. All right. Okay. So big star here though, guys, very, very important. Do not rearrange, okay, to isolate the unknown. Okay. That's a key portion because we want y equals mx plus b. So then we can go and figure out exactly what it is we want. We're going to be needing to figure out our slope and our x and our, our y intercept and all that good stuff. All right. Okay. So our next step, you're going to identify where x is in the equation. So look at your equation. What is the x variable? You're going to find that. Okay. We then are going to have to find our b, okay? So y equals mx plus b. So any part of the equation that is separated by a plus or minus sign and is not multiplied by the x, that is going to be your y interceptor b, okay? If the physics formula has no add or subtract function, b is going to be zero. Okay, and that's okay. 
there we're when we are going to go through um, the next portion of the video where we're going to be doing questions like this we're going to go through three and with those three uh, you will have the opportunity to um, see all of these examples okay all right so once we've identified um, x and b and have y isolated on the other side any other variables that are going to be left that aren't accounted for and they are by either x y or b we group them together and they become the slope of the graph okay and what should happen in any case that I will give you is you'll see these leftover variables are all going to be multiplied or divided by x in the equation. Once you have your um, once you have your y equals mx plus b equation, you can do anything that you need to do graphically in order to solve this. You might need to calculate the slope manually. You might need to make a stat plot. You might, in order to get the slope, you might need to do some algebra to solve. So that's where every single question is gonna change and you're gonna to need to use your logic, your understanding of graphs and your understanding of physics in order to solve the problem. Okay? Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're done with these set of notes for now. I want you to put these notes away, and then I want you to pull out uh, the notes for graphing linear momentum, and then we'll be right back. All right. See you in a moment. Welcome back, crew. So I hope you guys are ready to rumble. Uh, you guys are going to need your graphing calculators for this, so make sure you have this on hand. Um, if you don't have a graphing calculator, please make sure you get one. Um, these are going to be pretty important uh, for this course. Um, and as a reminder, in physics, we don't use radians, we use degrees. So make sure your calculators and degrees are you're going to have a rad time, pun intended. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, with our graphing linear momentum, what I did today is I put the graphing style, the line of best fits in the graph prior to filming, um, in the notes prior to filming. So you guys are going to need to draw in your own line of best fit, um, but I did it in advance because drawing a line of best fit on this thing is a nightmare. So I did it first. You don't have to watch me struggle. In the next graphing videos, you get to watch me struggle. So try to alleviate that this time around. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to jump right into it. And we are going to follow the steps that we talked about on the previous uh, portion of the video with this that previous set of notes. And now we're going to look at how to do this. All right. So in a simple experiment, a student collides two identical cards. Now when we say identical, what does that tell us? Very important guys. Mass is the same. Okay. Okay, so the mass of each cart is going to be the same. They're going to collide together in a head-on collision. Okay, the student varies the velocity of cart one for each trial, but ensures that the velocity of cart two remains the same. Okay, that's important. Uh, the student also ensures that after each collision, the carts stick together. Okay, very good. So that's, we're deal, going to be dealing with a hit and stick collision. The student measures the resultant velocity of the two carts stuck together. To keep the experiment somewhat simplified, the student puts the carts on a set of tracks to keep the carts on the linear path. Perfect. Uh, the student also decides to make sure, uh, the, sure the speed of cart one is greater than cart two, so the carts uh, stick together after the collision will always head in the same direction as cart one. Okay, good. So fairly straightforward. To summarize this, two carts collide. This one is cart one. This is cart two. Cart one's got a greater velocity. They're going to collide and go this way. Okay, so that is what is happening here. Before we do anything, let's draw our vector diagram. I've got the page set up here, so I've got extra space after this. So I've got a whole blank page here um, to draw out what we need to draw out. So we're going to be doing a lot of scrolling back and forth here. 
So let's do that very first. Let's draw what we have so we know what the heck we're dealing with. So we have before, we have cart one going this way. We have cart two going this way. We know that M1 is going to equal M2 because the carts are, are going to be identical. So therefore, I am just going to call it M, okay? So each of these guys have a mass of M, Gulbanes. All right, we don't know anything about V yet, so we're just gonna leave that for now. Okay, after we know that cart one and cart two are sticking together. And we know that it's set up in such a way that cart one and cart two are always going to go in the same direction, okay? Because these are sticking together, we know that the mass of both of these stuck together, okay? So we could call this, um, I'm gonna call it M1 plus two. Well, it is the same, as two of these guys and they're identical carts they have the same mass so that means our mass of this object is going to be 2m we still don't know about um, what we can say about the speed yet so we're going to leave it for now we're going to go back to our graph and we're going to add in the other info that we need from there okay so ladies and gentlemen let's look and see what it is we need to determine so question one what is the theoretical value of the slope so essentially, what does the slope equal? What does the slope mean? So we're going to have to do some math and use the graph to calculate the velocity of cart two before the collision. Okay, we can do that. So let's start with our slope and let's start by figuring out what on earth we need to do. Well, remember when we go back to our other set of notes, our curve straightening notes, you'll see step one is to identify what our manipulated, manipulated and responding variables are. So your X and Y. Now, when we're going to be looking at the graph, now unfortunately my, uh, on mine, uh, the label got cut off here on the Y. On your notes, what you should see is final speed of cart one and two, um, Okay, so we can write uh, final speed of cart one plus two after collision. And the speed is in centimeters per second. Okay, so remember ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to convert the units at this point, leave it in centimeters per second, but just know that's the units you're dealing with and keep track of it throughout. Okay, the same as what you should be doing with any other unit. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is the Y. So the Y is going to be the speed of both carts after the collision. Okay, well, let's go back down to our section of info and recognize that we're just going to call this V prime okay, is going to equal the y variable. All righty, Al. Okay, so we have info that we can use now. Good, we have mass and we have v, a, at least a variable on the graph we can use for v. Good, we're on a roll. Now let's go and look at what x is. x is initial speed of card one. Okay, good. So let's go and scroll down and put that in here. We know that V1 is our X variable. Good. V2, remember from what we looked at earlier, that is what we are going to be needing to calculate. Okay? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us go on to step number two. Step number two is identify the physics equation that's going to describe the relationship between the x and y variables. Well, fortunately for us, uh, we know that we're dealing with linear momentum. So that is what we're going to be looking at. We need to set this up in such a fashion that we are going to have 
conservation of linear momentum. Remember that the sum of our initial momentum is going to equal the sum of our final momentum. Well, remember, ladies and gentlemen, that mv1 plus mv2 is going to be, so mv of this guy, mv of this guy, is now going to equal our m1 plus 2v prime. Okay, so we've got that set up. If you are unclear on or confused with the conservation of linear momentum at this point, pause the video, go back, do more practice problems on the previous lesson on conservation of linear momentum, and then come back to this point. Because I am just going to make the assumption from now on that you are reasonably comfortable with conservation of linear momentum. Okay? All right. If you're still having troubles, make sure you come see me. All right. So now that we have this here, we are going to need to start organizing this with our next step. So your next step is going to be to rearrange the equation to isolate the responding variable for y. Okay. So well, let's start putting in our values before we do that. Well, we know that m is the same. We know that v1 is x. So mass times x, and we know v2, we don't know what v2 is. So we're just going to have to leave that as v2. Okay. And then on our next piece, well, what can we put into there? Hmm. Guess what? 2m. Okay, whoops. Equals 2m. We know v prime is our y. You know what? I'm not going to put that x in there. I've changed my mind. I'll put that x in later. Okay, all right, so we have this. We've got this as our 2m and our v prime. Now, what we are going to need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to need to isolate for v prime. That's our y. We need to get this guy on his own. So, what do we do? I'm going to divide out by 2m on both sides. By dividing out 2m, I am going to get v prime on its own. Okay, so v prime, which is my y value, is going to equal mv1 plus mv2 divided by 2m. Oh, look at this. I have an m in both terms up here. Because m is in both terms, that means I could factor out that m if I want. Remember that m is the same value. Because I could factor it out and it's in both terms and I'm dividing by m here, I can cancel that out. Okay. So I am now left with v prime is equal to v1 plus v2 divided by 2. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, remember v2 is what we're trying to solve for. v1 is our x. Now, we can't, these guys are connected together. We don't want x and this guy and this guy all like tied up by being divided by 2. So, let us reorganize this so that way, mathematically, it means the same thing. Remember what you can do instead of having it like this. You can write like this, okay? Because you're dividing both of them. All right, write it like that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now what we can do is we have th we need to think about what is y, m, x, and b. Remember our v prime. We already knew that. We rearranged that to be our y right off the bat. Remember. That x, ladies and gentlemen, is equal to v2. Well, we have a kind of a bit of an issue. Or v1, excuse me, v1 is x. So with v1, well, look, at x divided by 2. Well, we can rewrite that. Let's rewrite this. Instead of being over 2, 
I am going to write, I'm just going to rewrite the whole equation here. It's going to be meter. Instead of being divided by two, multiply it by a half. Oops. There we go. There we go. So this guy here, we know is the Y. We know that V1 is X because that is on our graph that tell we're told that it's X. Remember now, anything that is going to be added to X is going to be your Y intercept. So V2 over two is going to equal your value of B. What about our slope? Anything multiplied by or divided by the X is going to be your slope. So our slope is going to be one half. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our answer for A. Your slope, your theoretical value of the slope is one half. Okay, so now that we have our equation set up into y equals mx plus b, we are then able to use our knowledge of graphing in order to solve for our velocity too. Well, look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, we are trying to find the value of v2. Well, graphically, when we look at y equals mx plus b, v2 divided by 2 is b. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Using the graph, we can get the value of b. So let's go back up to our graph. Do, 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 back up to the graph. Now remember, b is your y-intercept. There it is. Okay, so it's going to be a ballpark of about negative 0.23. Okay, so that is where your graph, your line of best fit is going to be. You're also welcome to get a more exact value by a stat plot. On the next question, uh, we're going to go over how to do that because we, we kind of need it. Um, more likely to need it on the, on the next question. Okie dokie. So... Ladies and gentlemen, from our graph, we have that it's going to be negative, your value of B is negative 0 0.23. We're trying to find the value of B2, V2. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Okay. V2 is going to equal 2 times negative 0. Point, that should be a 2, 3, okay? Once you plonk that in your lovely calculator, you are going to get negative 0. 0.46. All right, sig digs, units, direction. All right. So... V2, ladies and gentlemen, well, for sig digs, we're going to go back up and look at your graph. You have your 0 0.46 units. Centimeters a second. Watch your units. Now, direction. What does that negative tell us? It's going to be going opposite to cart one. We don't know exactly if it's left or right. So, we're just going to say opposite to cart one. That's going to be our direction. That's an R. And that's your final answer. Not too shabby, eh? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got two more questions that we're going to do. I'm going to walk through this next one with you. Okay, and then the second one, I'm going to ask that you guys try it on your own. Okay, try it on your own 
and then I will go through it in the video. That's next, the second question or the very last question of this, the one I want you to try on your own, I'm going to be going over fairly quick because I'm going to assume you've already done the question and are now just checking your answers. Okay. Okay, so this one here, not titled problem number one, we are going to, I'm going to walk through this one with you more slowly than the next one, which will be titled problem number two. I'm going to ask that you guys try on your own first, and then I'll go over it so you can check your answers. Okay. All right, let's get ready to rumble. Or we are rumbling, however we want to call it. So let's have a look, see and figure out what we're dealing with. All right, so a student is performing an experiment that is related to momentum. The student used a, car, a two cart system where two carts collide and stick together after the collision. Okay, hit the stick again, very good. Cart one has a mass of 1.54 kilograms and the speed of cart one is changed with each trial. Okay, so that tells us that is going to be our um, x variable, our manipulated variable. All right, cart one will collide with cart two, which is initially at rest. All right, the student measures, that's important, that tells us our v2 is zero. The student measures both the initial speed of cart one before the collision and the speed of carts one and two combined after the collision. Okay, we can do this. So, use the slope of the graph to calculate the mass of cart 2. All right, so what's our first thing? Draw stuff. So, we are going to scroll down here and we are going to draw stuff. Now, I've left a blank page here for writing all the work. So, we need to think here. We have cart one going this way. Okay. We have cart two, let me draw this so it's lined up a little bit better, is at rest. We have been asked to use the slope of the graph to calculate mass two. So we don't know what mass two is other than we know that's our unknown. We know that V2 is going to be zero centimeters a second or whatever units you want because it's at rest. We have been told that the mass of cart one is 1.54. Okay, 1.54 kilograms. Okay, we know that V1 is going to be on our graph because it is being changed. So we're going to leave that for now until we go back and look at our graph. Let us draw after. Cards one and two are sticking. Okay, now we don't know what mass two is. So the mass prime is going to be M1 plus M2, okay? So we could go a little bit farther with M prime uh, because we know mass one is 1.54 plus M2. So we can do that. That's as far as we can go for our mass prime, um, so after the collision. So we're gonna have to leave that for now we know we are going to get a v prime. I'm just going to write v prime for v1 plus 2, okay? But we don't know what that is going to be yet. So let's leave that for now. We've got a decent amount of data set up, but now we're going to need our graphing data. And we're going to need to use the slope. So we definitely need to use our graphing stuff. Okay. So once again, I have inserted the line of best fit prior to filming. So if you guys haven't drawn your line of best fit, draw your line of best fit now. Pause the video. Draw a line of best fit. Cool. So now that you've drawn your line of best fit, we're going to look at our X and Y axes. So why, ladies and gentlemen, 
is the speed of cart one and two combined. So that is after the collision. Note speed, so we're not talking direction here. And speed of cart one. Okay, very good. So once again, we're not looking at direction here. So we have our values. This is x. Let's go and put these into the equation or our setup. We know our v prime, uh, it's going to be going that way, and we know that v prime is going to be y. Okay, we know that v1 is x. Good. We have at least something in there for all of our equations, be it an actual number or a question mark or a variable or what have you. So we at least have enough to do some math. We also have our graph. So we'll, I'm going to show you two different ways to get your graph or your slope once we get things into y equals mx plus b. Okay. So our second step, ladies and gentlemen, the next thing we need to do is we need to get our equation set up. So remember that this is conservation of linear momentum. Okay. So the sum of all initial momentum is going to equal the sum of all the momentum after the collision. Well, here we have mv1 plus mv2 is going to equal m prime v prime. Okay. Now, well, guess what? This is zero. That's nice. Got rid of that off the bat. That makes life easier. So now, mv1 is going to equal m prime v prime. All right. Okay. So you're all with me? All right. So ladies and gentlemen, let us expand that m prime. mv1 is going to equal m1 plus m2 times v prime. Okay, I'm going to make sure this guy's labeled m1 because we've got um, the two m's here. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, now we need to start thinking what is y and we're going to isolate the y. y is v prime. So I need to get v prime isolated. I am going to divide by m1 plus m2 okay so my v prime is going to equal m v1 over m1 plus m2 all right all right so that should be m1 so we're getting there we're doing all right all right so ladies and gentlemen now we're gonna need to do some pondering hmm we are going to need to start thinking about what is y what is y what is m what is x and what is b well we know v prime is y we know this is x we have nothing added to this. So that means it's going to be plus zero. Our B is zero. Remember that pretty much everything else is going to relate to M. So let's get them off of that X. So let's just rewrite this nice and neat so we can really clearly see what X is. So V prime. I'm going to factor out all this. Times V2. Okay. Well, plus zero. This is Y. V2 is X. Okay. And, oops, not V2. It should be V1. It's Monday. Beg pardon. V1 
is x, b is going to equal zero, and this whole thing here is going to equal your slope. All right, okay. So look at that. So we need to then find what the value of M2 is using the slope. Well, we have our slope here. We don't need the rest of this stuff. We just need the slope. The question says use the slope in order to calculate the mass of car two. All right. So we know that our slope is going to equal M1 over M1 plus M2. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all we need now is to get the value of the slope. We have the value of M1. We just need to rearrange them to get M2. But we got a problem. Where do we get the slope? Two places. One, with the line of best fit that I insisted that you get earlier, um, you can calculate your slope. I've circled two points um, here. I've got the, with those two points that have been circled, you can calculate your slope, okay? So you can do this by hand, okay? So where your slope is equal to delta y over delta x, and so with your change in y, you're gonna have five minus 3.2 divided by your 3.4 minus 2.2. And once you plunk all of that into your calculator, you're going to wind up with your 1.2 over 1.8, which is gonna give you 0 0.6 repeating. There's your slope if you choose to do it that way. Now, please remember, ladies and gentlemen, that everyone's line of best fits are gonna be a little bit off, um, and that's okay. When I give you a question like this on your assignment, there is not gonna be one of these on your test, but there is one of these on your assignment, okay? Okay, um, I'm gonna be flexible with the answer key. If you've shown your work beautifully, I can follow exactly what you're doing, and you have an answer that's close enough, perfect. Correct sig digs, units, etc. But if my answer is 1.5 and you've given me 15, well, that's not even remotely close, so no, I'm not giving points for that. But if it's 1.5 and you, know, you give me 1.8, that's good. All right, my phone's ringing. I'm gonna pause this and I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do now is that we have calculated the slope manually that way. That is one option. The second option that you can do is going to be more consistent and more accurate than calculating it in that fashion. So I'm just going to write my two possible values for my slope. Okay, so I will have got 0 0.6 repeating as one of my slopes. That is gonna be my slope calculated by hand, okay? You can get a, another slope calculated with your calculator. So I'm gonna put a little blurb here that is going to say graphing calculator. You can get the slope of a line using a stat plot so for this case, we're going to scroll back up to the graph and you are going to pull out your calculator. I'm going to go full screen. So then that way you can see what buttons I'm going to be pointing. I want you to have this graph on the page in front of you visible so you can see those points. Okay. Okay. All right. We're full screen. So I have my gra lovely graphing calculator. So what you're going to do is you're first going to turn on your graphing calculator. In order to use a stat plot to get the slope, you are going to push the button that says stat. Okay, or if actually first you're going to go second stat plot. So second Y. And then this first bit here, you're going to make sure that the stat plot says on. Okay, so plot one, make sure that's on. Second quit. You are then going to push the button that says stat. OK, 
okay? You are then going to push the button that says, so one, which is edit. I have already done this bit in advance, okay? Under, now I accidentally screwed up my calculator and actually deleted the entire of list one. Yeah, so what you should have as list one, I have as list two, and uh, what you should have as list two, I have as list three. So then you are going to enter in the points. What your list one, and in this case, my list two, is going to be X. This is going to be Y. So you'll notice I have one here and 0.6 here. That is the X of that point. That is the y of that point. So every single dot on your graph, you're going to write type in those points. Okay, type in each of those data points. Once you have them all in there, you are going to go second quit. Okay, so you're going to exit out of that. Those numbers aren't going to go away. You're then going to click stat again. You're going to scroll over to calc. Once you are there, you're going to select number four, either scroll down to four or just hit four and enter. Okay. If you've used uh, list one and list two, just hit enter four times. Da -da 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 -da. Done. If you did something like me and deleted your list one, which was silly on my part, you are going to change um, these lists here. Notice mine says list two and list three um, by uh, these numbers down here. So second one will give you list one, second two gives you list two, second three gives you list three. So just adjust the, the list that you needed using those. And then you hit enter all the way through until you get on your screen like this. So you're gonna see y equals ax plus b. And then you're gonna have the value of a and the value of b. The value of A is what we want. So when you look at the value of B, we have 0 0.009. So 0 0.01 when you round it up. Well, we theoretically calculated the value of B to be zero. Good. So we have something that theoretically works with that zero. And then we have a, our slope. Now I've done this a couple of times. I'm gonna go back to full, uh, jump back in the corner now. There you go, I'm back in the corner. So. I've done this a couple times and I've got a few different answers depending on if I have entered in some of these weird points a tiny bit differently, but you should have answers that are going to be close. Okay, so you are going to see in your calculator y equals ax plus b and you are going to see that a is going to equal 0 0.6. Now I got 0 0.68 the most recent time that I did this, 0 0.6806 dot dot dot. And then I got the value of B as negative 0 0.009 dot dot dot. Okay, so now I have the slope. I am going to choose to use my calculator answer because it is going to be more accurate than this one. But notice they're not off by that much. This one's rounded is 0 0.67 and this is 0 0.68. And the previous time I did this, I got this to be 0 0.69. So it's, it's going to work out to be close enough. And that's the type of differences that um, I'm going to be okay with when you're going to be doing um, this type of question on your assignment. All right, so I'm gonna use this equation here and I'm going to use this slope here in order to get the value of mass two. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so I have some more space. My slope is equal to, remember from what we looked at earlier, m1 over m1 plus m2 my slope is equal to 0 0.680, okay, um, six dot dot dot, and then I am going to multiply that number by, oops, sorry, equate that number to m1 plus m2, all right, 
And then we're going to get our M1, which remember we, um, oops, I'm going to put our M1 in there, which is 1.54. Okay, I wrote this completely upside down. We have no M2 here. I'm sorry, guys. It's Monday. And it actually is a Monday today. Get yeah, my computer. Okay, so in order to isolate M2, we got to get M2 up to the top. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1.54 plus M2. That's going to give me 1.54. Okay. All right. So now what do we do? Hmm. What do we do? We're going to do some rearranging here, guys. We are going to isolate our M2. What's a good way to do that? Multiply three by 1.54. All right, I need to pause this to do some calculator stuff. Um, I'll be right back. So you don't have to see me punching numbers into my calculator for ages. One sec. All right, we're back. So ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this, we're going to multiply our 0 0.6806. I'm going to foil that through. And we are going to, now once again, use all the digits in your calculator. Use all of them. No rounding at this point, guys. So we're going to wind up with our lovely number of 1.0482 dot 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 plus 0 0.6806 dot dot m2 is going to equal 1.54. Okay, so far so good. I am then going to subtract out this number. That is going to leave me with 0 0.6806 m2 and then subtracting 1.54 by this guy to get him over there is going to leave me with the lovely value of 0 0.49174. Now I'm going to divide out the 0 0.68, all digits guys, all digits, and that is going to leave me with m2 of 0 0.72248 dot 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 kilograms. So the first time I did this, um, I had a 0 0.69 dot 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 for my value of slope and I got 0 0.68 kilograms. This time round, I did this with a um, stat plot that I got a 0 0.68 for a slope and I got 0 0.72 kilograms. Okay, so that's fine. I was only off by 0.4 and not too terrible. So in that case, ladies and gentlemen, I would accept both answers as right. So long, correct units, sig digs, show your work, etc. Okay, so because I'm going to be expecting slightly different answers in your guys' assignments and me still accepting them as correct, you really, really need to be showing your work properly so I can actually give you the points. If you hand me in a messy scrawl that I can't follow, I don't even have a right answer to determine if you got it right or not, because they're all going to be a little different. So be neat, please, when showing your work. So we're going to communicate our final answer with appropriate units and sig digs. So M2, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we want two sig digs, so 0 0.72 kilograms. All right, there's the correct sig digs, correct units. This is going to be scalar, so therefore we don't need direction. Cool bands. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I would like you guys to do is I want you to try this problem number two on your own first. Okay, I am going to go through this one faster in the video now. I am going to make the assumption that you are going to stop the video, 
do this question on your own, and then use the next section to check your answers. All right, so it's going to be going faster if you actually if you don't listen to me and don't do the question first, it's going to be hard to follow and you're going to be pausing a lot. So for your own educational benefit, just do the question. All right, pause the video. We're back. All right, so now that you have paused the video and you've done that question, we are going to go through it. So then that way you guys can check your answer. Okay, so let us read the question and figure out what it is that we are going to need. So a student performs an experiment which consists of two carts colliding into each other. They collide cart one into cart two, both uh, which are both heading into the same direction. All right, cart two always starts out at the same velocity before the collision. Therefore, cart two always has the same momentum before the collision. Good to know. The student varies the momentum of cart one before the collision by varying the speed of cart two. Very good. The student ensures the collision is always linear and that carts one and two stick together after the collision. All right, so let's go and draw this out. So then that way we can figure out what is happening. So because it says that they're going in the same direction, it's going to change things up a bit. Before we have cart one going this way, we have cart two also going this way. They're going in the same direction. Okay, so we know that we have the mass of cart one somewhere in there. I don't, we haven't been given, it hasn't been given to us. Okay, we know cart two, we don't know if it's going to be the same. But we know that these two are going to be constant, so that means that we're going to have a constant P2. Okay, all right, so that's what we've got so far for before. For after, we are going to have carts one and cart two sticking into each other. So this is like a rear-ending scenario with vehicles. They're going to be stuck together, so M prime is going to be M1 plus M2. All right, and then we have got our V prime. So we don't really quite know what that is, but it's going to give us a momentum prime. And this guy is going to give us a momentum one. That's all we can do for now. We're now going to jump back up. And we are going to then start looking at some of the values that we have. There is no numerical values in the question here. But we can go and start looking at our graph. You should have drawn your line of best fit. So I did this in advance before I even started filming, got that in there. So you have your line of best fit. Make sure that's drawn in there. We're now going to go and look at what our y and x values are. So the y value is momentum of cart one and two stuck together after the collision. Okay. And our x value is the speed of cart one before the collision. So let's go put those in there. Oh, I got that silly pop-up thing. It's this literacy program thing that I don't use that keeps popping up on my computer. I don't know why. It's annoying. Okay, so we know that this is x, okay, and we know that that is y. Okay, very good. So let's go see if there's anything else that we are going to need to know. We should probably figure out what the question wants us to do. All right. So A, use the slope of the graph to calculate the mass of cart one. Okay. And it wants you to use y equals mx plus b. And then use the graph to determine the momentum of cart two before the collision. Okay. So... We know we are going to need to find this guy here using the graph. All right. And then we also know that we are going to need to find oops, the slope. Having a Monday. You want to use the slope to find the mass of cart one. Okay. I was like, ah, mass of cart one, mass of cart two. So those are the two things that we're going to need to find. 
So let us begin by getting our equation going. Remember that this guy, sum of initial momentum, is going to equal the sum of momentum prime. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple of ways we can go about this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember that we don't have an M2. We're not asked to find M2. The question hinted at how they want you to go about this. So, it's a use the graph to find P2. P2 is going to be something that we're going to be needing to find. So let's use P2 instead of MV, M2V2 for this. Okay? So we're not going to use P1 because we're trying to find M1 and we need to find, and, and V1 is our X. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to set this up as MV1 plus P2 is going to equal m prime v prime okay oops i realized something made a mistake guys can you figure out my mistake i labeled the wrong y i was getting my x's and y's backwards we were doing velocity in the previous questions p prime is our y forgive me i hope you guys caught that mistake and figured out what i was doing wrong i love it when you guys do that okay so let's fix this because P prime is our Y, that's what we're going to put there. Okay. Hey, well, will you look at that, ladies and gentlemen? That's already set up pretty nicely as far as Y equals MX plus B goes. Sweet. So, that's, that's pretty nice. So, because your P prime is your Y, And then we have, we know that our X is V1, okay, plus P2. Look at this, it's already Y equals MX plus B. That's awesome. This is Y. I love it when this happens when the M winds up being M. I find that hilarious. X and this is your B. Not too bad, eh? So, ladies and gentlemen, what you now can do, the question is for A, was use the slope to calculate the mass of cart one. All right. So there's a couple of different things you can do for your slope. You can calculate it manually using the line of best fit um, and a couple of points above if you want. Um, so for example, there's your line of best fit. You can pick two points, say, I don't know, 530, because I like 530 because it's like right on a corner. And say, I don't know, that guy, use your y-intercept, whatever points you want. I don't care. Calculate the slope manually if you want, or use your graphing calculator. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to choose to use my graphing calculator using the same method that I did previously. I'm not going to walk you through it because if you want to be walked through it again, go back and watch that part of the video again. But on your graphing calculator using a stat plot, you're going to see y equals ax plus b. And you're going to see that the value of A using um, the points, when I did this, I got 4.95. So you can use that. If yours is similar, that's great. If yours is like 21, no, go back and fix that. And then B we get is 5.2. Very good. So what this tells us, ladies and gentlemen, is guess what? Our slope is M is equal to M1. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the mass of cart one is uh, with your sig digs. We round that up. We would get a mass of 5.0 kilograms. Okay, not too shabby.
Now, once again, if I see a final answer like this of 5.0, if I see a final answer that gets you 4.9, if I see 5.2, those are all ballpark enough and it will change depending on exactly what decimals you put into your stat plot, which might be off by a little bit and that's okay. However, if I see 15, well, something seriously went wrong, you're not getting points for 15. So show your work very, very clearly. Then, ladies and gentlemen, you need to calculate or use the graph. So that's A. It says use the graph to determine the momentum of cart two. Okay, so when we scroll up here, oh, come on, computer. There we go. Momentum of cart two before the collision. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on our graph, on our graph, it wants the y-intercept. Remember in our y equals mx plus b, p2 was b. Here is your y-intercept. So that also tells us, and how did I get that number? Well, not only did I read it off my line of best fit, right there, I also get it here. So P2 is going to equal 5.2. Now we need units, kilogram times centimeters per second. Okay, so why did I put my units as centimeters per second? Because that's the unit on the graph. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know this stuff is tricky, so make sure that you guys are comfortable with this before you do that on, on your assignment. Um, watch the video as many times as you need. And ladies and gentlemen, you have one of these questions on your assignment. You are not going to see this on your unit test simply because of the time it takes. All right? Okay. So, Hope you guys found that interesting. We're going to be returning to this uh, y equals mx plus b concept throughout the rest of the course. So we'll see it again. All right. Have a good day, guys. We will see you next time. No fires, injuries, or explosions.